Hi friends! Kamusta? Alright, so welcome to my channel and thank you so much for watching this. Thank you for liking my videos and also to all of the subscribers out there. I appreciate you friends. So by the way, my name is Jason Jim and welcome to my vlog. Alright, so I came here in Canada through International Student Pathway and that was way back 2018. Yes, so it was January 2018 when I came here in Canada. So for today's video, I would just like to share what were the um, documents that I provided. I'll be giving you the requirements from Canada.ca and additional requirements that I provided. So when you are planning to apply to go here in Canada as an international student, you need to know what type of application you want to go through. So there are two types of applications if you really wanted to be an international student. The first one is the regular stream and the second one is the student direct stream or what they call the SDS. So this SDS is the fastest way, but take note, this is more expensive way to go here in Canada as a student. And there are just, there are just um, specific countries like China, India, Morocco, Pakistan, Philippines, Senegal, and Vietnam. So these countries are only um, allow, allowed to apply for the SDS. But uh, this video that I'll be sharing with you is based on my experience and that's gonna be the regular stream. So for how long do you want to study in Canada? And after graduation, how long will you work? So the first one is certificate. So for the certificate, you can choose one year program or two year programs. If you choose a one year program, you can just only get one year work permit. But if you, got, if you get the two certificate programs, you can um, stay in Canada and work as a maximum of three years work permit. The second one is diploma. For diploma, uh, most of the programs are in two-year program. If you finish the two-year program studying, you can also get the maximum of three years work permit. Same thing as bachelor degree. So this is a four years program or more and you will also get a three years work permit. So there's a question, can I go back home? The answer is yes. So it means to say that you can go to your home country when you are studying. It depends on your reason, of course. There are semester breaks, but make sure to, um, to show proof when you go back here in Canada so that um, the embassy will know that you are really enrolled to your specific school. All right, so let's now go to the eligibility. The first thing that you need to know is that you need to choose a designated learning institutions or DLIs, what they call here. These, these um, institutions, these schools, universities, colleges, these are approved by provincial and territorial government to host an international student. After choosing the, the universities or school or college that you want to go to, make sure that they also issue a post-graduation work permit. So it means to say that you need to know if you are eligible working after graduation. Not all DLIs are providing a postgraduate permit. I will also link below where can you find all of the designated learning institutions here in Canada. The next one is proof of money to pay. There are um, tuition fees. For example, in my case, when I was still uh, back in the Philippines, I already paid for my first semester. I also provided with um, my bank accounts that I can pay for the second semester for me to, um, to show them that I am prepared studying in Canada. The second one is living expenses. 
So if you are here in Canada, Canada needs to know if you can support yourself or your parents can support yourself each day while you are studying here because you need or you have a lot of things to pay here not just a tuition fee you need to pay for your books transportation food to eat you need to pay for the rent and all of the expenses that you need to pay Canada should know that you have that money to support yourself the third one is return of transportation later on in the other additional documents I will let you know why does Canada need to know if you will going back again to your home country. You need to have a specific number or a specific money that is um, allotted for your transportation if you will finish and if you will go back in your home country. Alright, so you have the designated learning institution that you have chosen. You already uh, have, a, have a proof of money in paying the fees and expenses. The third one is NBI clearance or the police certificate. So each country has, of course, different um, laws or different types of, of NBI internationally. Because in the Philippines, we have two types. It's either local or going abroad. Of course, since I'm going to go to other country, I chose the going abroad NBI clearance. The next one is medical examination. So when you're applying for your visa, you also need to include a medical um, examination. And there are also specific medical health clinics that Can Canadian Embassy is affiliated with. And the last and fifth eligibility is that you need to prove once a study permit expires, you will leave Canada. As I have mentioned earlier, in the proof of money to pay that you need to allot a return of transportation. So why does Canada need to know that um, after we graduate, we need to go back in our home country? Because that is your main goal, to study in Canada and to have a degree, certificate, or diploma in that country. Okay, so take note. If you have chosen a one-year certificate program, Canada will give you your study permit for one year. They will also give you a one-year work permit that you only need to work for 20 hours. All right, so you are now eligible to go here in Canada. So what are the documents that you need to provide? The first document that you need to provide is the LOA or the Letter of Acceptance. The Letter of Acceptance will be given by your DLIs. So in my case, what I did was I paid for the reservation. And if not mistaken, that was uh, 1,500 Canadian dollars. And then after that, maybe a week or two, they responded to me and I had my letter of acceptance. The second is the proof of identity. You need to provide your valid passport or travel documents and you also need to uh, to give two recent passport size photos so in this part i will um, give you what canada immigration citizenship or cic indicated in their website the first one is proof of canadian bank account in your name so here in canada there are big six banks and those are national bank of canada royal bank of canada the Bank of Montreal, the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, the Bank of Nova Scotia, and TD Bank Group. So the next one, according to the CIC, you also need to have a guaranteed investment certificate or the GIC from a participating Canadian financial institution. Next is a proof of education loan from a bank. They also need um, your bank statements bank draft, proof of paid tuition and housing fees, letter from the person or school giving you money, proof of fund due to scholarship. So you can find these list of documents at canada.ca and I will link in the description below. Alright, so I already gave you the documents that CIC required you to provide. The next part of the video is that I will be sharing you what I have provided and my experience in giving the documents. I categorized parents, both, and the applicant student, which is me. So my parents provided bank accounts, 
bank statements and certificates, company documents. So that time, my father was the only, the only one who was working. So my father provided um, his retirement fund breakdown, the employment certifications, compensations, tax withheld, or what we call the ITR. Next is, my parents also provided affidavit of assurance to return and payment of tuition fees. So those are indicated or and provided in the visa application that I applied. Next is that I and my parents provided, which are the explanation of funding support. In my case, what I had written was that my parents will support all throughout my um, educational tuition fee and also my expenses. While on the other hand, my parents had written that same thing, but in vice versa, that um, my parents will be supporting me throughout my studying in Canada. The next one that we both provided were the valid IDs. So I provided my passport and driver's license. Same thing with my father, but my mom um, doesn't drive, so she just provided her passport. Next would be the documents that I provided. First, my resume. So with my resume, it is still in Philippine format. There are some differences between Philippine resume and also here in Canada. The next one is the medical and immunization certificates. So I did my medical assessment and examination at St. Luke's Medical Center Extension Clinic. And I also had some immunization that the Canada or the college needed me to provide. Next is my birth certificate, the employment certificate. I also provided, as I mentioned earlier, NBI clearance and police clearance. Next is the educational documents. The first one is English certification. So here in Canada, it depends on your chosen program. Some of the universities, colleges needed IELTS or CELPIP for them to accept you as an international student. But luckily, in my college here in Ontario, they, di they didn't need a certification. What they required and I provided is a certification from my university in which English is a primary language during my education. The next is the high school diploma and a high school record. College or the university diploma and a transcript of records. The last um, document that I provided was the letter of application. I indicated why did I want to study in Canada. So those are the documents that my parents and I provided to the embassy for me to apply for the International Student Canada Permit. There's a question, so how much is the proof of funds that Canada needed for us to provide? So, according to the Canada Immigration and Citizenship, or the CIC, for the student alone, uh, the amount of funds required per year is $10,000. So, in my case, I did two years um, certificate programs so roughly I provided like twenty five to twenty seven thousand dollars in my bank account all right so those are the documents that you need to prepare in applying for an international student here in Canada hope you like this video and I hope you learn a lot so if you have any other questions just let me know and comment down below or if you have any topic that you want me to discuss please let me know so continue to like and subscribe to my channel and again this is jason jim thank you so much and see you to my next video see ya hey guys my name is cody may i've been a friend of jason's for a little while now just wanted to give a quick shout out and say i love the channel i find it very informative and i look forward to more topics being covered in the future um, I know it's been a difficult few weeks with everything that's going on right now and I just wanted to let everyone know that we will get through this. It's going to be a, a difficult period, but we're going to come out on the other side bigger and stronger than ever. Okay? So, take care everyone. Um, peace out.